help a therapeutic target in counseling. It's a beautiful journey. And the hope is very much important and that's to this timeline. The 2020 dawned and people had so much of struggles, but it's a beautiful way to inculcate hope and to go again in life. Friends, and as you know, I'm from Anugraha Institute of Social Sciences. Guess who's this guy? Um, if you know, please type the answers in the chat box, but I don't think none of you will know it. Near a New, New York City, a little town near New York City. This statue stood in front of a bank, but actually it was uh, inside the bank. They pushed it 30 feet aside and outside they kept it. And they didn't know who that person was or they knew. So they kept it aside. Maybe they didn't know the importance of that statue and nobody knew. And the youngsters who went this way near the statue, they would hang around the batches on his hand, keep the beer can in his hand, and uh, they will chit chat, sit there, enjoy, have good time and fun. And some people thought this statue has to be protected. And they went in for an insurance company. An insurance company said, hey, we don't do that for all these antique things. Um, and yeah, maybe for 10,000 bucks, please. Okay, with that request, they took it up and, um, you know, sort of uh, a big glass piece is put around and the doom kept on its top and the statue was well protected. Days went by, my dear friends, and uh, the city went low in their income and the bank was supposed to get closed and they were selling off everything and they put this statue on an auction. Do you guess how much the auction went? One million US dollars. One million US dollars. Is Hadrian, born 24th January, was a Roman emperor. Friends, he was a benevolent dictator. And that statue, which was value of one million, US dollars, nobody knew the value of it. Each one of you attending this seminar or webinar of oh, more than 1 million value. And there is no one who can replace it. And all of us have this potency and capacity deep within us. At times we don't realize and hope can make this happen. And that's how we shall embark this journey. Please, dear friends, as uh, the principal directed you, I would request you to have your pen and paper, please. Why? Some of the inspirations that you get, it is good to take down. The moment you are taken down on a pen and paper, you are towards your successful path, 40%. That's a research. What is hope? On this journey of hope, we should know what is hope. <laughs> so there are so many theories. In simple term, I can call it a snapshot of your future. In a simple term, I would call it a snapshot of your future. It is a sense of successful goal-directed determination. Right. Everyone has this journey. Once a person chooses hope, everything is possible. A lot of research done, my dear friends, because one person's IQ is very high, it doesn't mean the person has a hope. There is zero correlation between intelligent quotient and hope. Hope is something that we need to become aware of. Most often in our teaching to others, in our counseling, in our, in our therapeutic techniques, this gets unnoticed, but this is most important, I tell you. Even in your ordinary family relationship, in a social setup, hope is such a beautiful gift. 
and this hope can bring up the utmost energy and resources from each one of you listening. So once you create hope, everything is possible. So friends, you create a hope that you are going, going to get answers to some of your questions through this talk and this hope will lead you into success. Right. I tested this on some children. I told them, hey guys, you know the children are fond of me like that. Uh, I, I can be like can you please mute your mind. Yeah, that's wonderful. Thank you. So, um, going on a picnic, I just told a group of children who were around me, they were all dull. So, I said, Hey guys, we are going on a picnic this weekend. Wow, they got full of energy, my dear friends. They started playing this song and watching this song. We're going on a picnic, going on a picnic, going on a picnic, picnic. What do you want to eat? Wow. They started imagining this. Maple and, uh, leaf. You know, what happens is this. Some of the children. What do you want to eat? So friends, they got energized. They started playing. They started playing their own game. They started singing songs, composing songs. So much of energy, the moment they created hope in them. Hope can create wonders. I experimented it with my own eyes. I seen the energy coming up in children. Friends, children whose brain has not yet fully grown, their frontal cortex is not yet fully grown. Even then, once they create hope, such energy comes deep within them. Such is the gift of hope, friends. Hope is creating memories of the future. And that is the key to every success. Hope creates memories of the future. They can simply visualize a picnic. They started watching picnic songs, they started imagining what all they would do, they started practicing what they will do in the picnic. Replay of picnic happens in the here and now. Even though the target is of the future, they began to live it in the now with happiness. Most often, we don't do that. Hope can create that energy. And this pandemic situation, when people are locked down, when they face a lot of these things, yeah. Recently, last week, I had one of my client. He was affected with COVID. He got admitted. His mother came to his assistance. Uh, mother got infected, and uh, before even being tested, and then you know, from mother it passed on to wife and to some of his relatives. Almost six people died in his family. And he's left alone with his daughter and son. Completely broken. Stagnate. And I just had sympathy and traveled with him. And it took a long time to create the light of hope. He wept and wept and wept. And it was a difficult path. It took a long journey and it's still on. Friends, have you ever had a dream of what is going to happen in the future? Imagine in one stage of your life, anywhere, you might have had the dream of getting a new thing, buying a new thing, or you know, getting a new house, or getting into a new relationship. Whatever that might be, if you would have dreamt about it, had the determination of achieving that, Already your brain started dreaming about it. The joy of getting into it or getting that wonderful. That keeps your oxytoxin alive. That keeps your energy fully active. So dear friends, hope has the power. Well, most of you heard about the story when you were small. Of the story of the thirsty crow. I remember the teacher who taught me, taught me differently, friends. 
Even today, I can remember the story. I don't know how your ta teachers taught you. Friends, this crow was very thirsty. In, in that thirst, the crow, when it saw a water, hope began to rise. In that hope, the crow began to dream of drinking the water and taking water in it and refreshing of you know, the sunlight, scorching sun around. So the dream and the hope made the crow to have a better idea of working on this difficult situation. And the crow started picking up the pebbles, putting them in and in till it could reach the water. Friends, from then on, my mind was full of hope. Even before I could get something in my life, I would dream and visualize as if it has happened. That has made my life most of the time successful. As you teach your children, as you give counseling to your clients, as you reach out to the other to help, always create this hope. Maybe of story narration, maybe of your just general advice, or it's a scientific counseling. Focus be on creating this hope, because hope is a powerful weapon of human energy. Friends, there are uh, different hopes. They call it realistic hope, where I know what I can achieve. And I know my talents, my aptitude level. And that's how, along with my aptitude level, I create a hope or I set a goal to achieve it. That is realistic hope. Utopian hope is something very beautiful. A group of youngsters who are drug addicts, they had no hope in life, no meaning in life. A coach called them up together motivated them, helped them to come out of all those struggles, and then gave them a dream of winning a championship in a rugby. And those dream or, you know, the dream came alive. The dream came alive by motivating them. It's called Utopian Hope, where the group of youngsters had a hope of winning a championship, a collective power, a synergy. So that is utopian hope. Chosen hope, people in the palliative care, those who have pain, a long lasting pain, even there we can create hope. I remember one of my friends working in that palliative care told me, and they were sure that they are going to die. All that they need is a pain reduction. And along with the medication that they give, when the nurses talk to them, hey, your pain is going to get down after this shot and you're going to get relaxed. And I'm there with you to any assistance. When they talk like that, more than the medication, the belief and the hope and the dream, the patient begins to visualize I'm going to get reduced of my pain, makes them to actualization. Transcendent hope. That is something that could happen. As something that could happen, making people to have a transcendent hope is most important to that current state right now. Why? This is not an end, friends. We have such a lot of energy. And uh, even having an utopian hope, if you are addressing a group of people, make them to visualize how they are going to overcome all the struggles that they have been facing right now. Or if you are facing a client in your personal counseling, create a sort of a realistic hope in your client. See, which type of hope most fitting for your client. For some of them, realistic hope is not possible. Maybe 
with the struggles that they have, they're not able to have a realistic hope. In those times, we can make an utopian hope, bringing the family into counseling, bringing his or her environment into counseling. So they can slowly move to the transcendent hope. So friends, check in. What type of hope is most fitting for you? And that's a amount of money spent on the research on hope is great, my dear friends. A researcher did this way. They chose a group of believers in religion, a group of non-believers in religion. Yeah. And they began to ask, what makes them to be the followers? And more or less, both the group's answer remained the same. And one among them that they mentioned that made them to be followers is hope. If you are a teacher, if you are a head of the family, if you are a counselor, if you are a psychotherapist, if you are a doctor, if you are a nurse, you should be the hope giver. And I think you are already. As you began this journey, you began to develop this hope. So all your followers, they need hope. Hope is not just a wish. People mostly misunderstand. A wish is something different. Hope is not a wish. You wish to uh, finish the seminar and go for a party. You wish to, no, that is not hope. Hope is half optimism. And there is a subtle difference between optimism and hope as well. Optimism is your attitude, a positive attitude towards your future. Belief is that you are certain plan to work on the future. And the hope is a certain you know, belief that you have to work on your future. So it is a of optimism. Hope is of optimism. People who have hope through their brain that can transmit the ray of hope, the rainbow, multicolor, joy, happiness. And that's how this is a perfect medication for most of our mental health problems. If those of you going through any serious mental health problems, I will teach you small, small techniques to come out of it. That's going to be the climate a climax of this today's session. Because the way you send through this race, through hope, life is going to be transforming. It's not only to you, people who are around. So let me see how hope works on your brain. Friends, a very recent research done among 231 high school students in China on how hope protects the brain. So this is a work of orbital front frontal cortex in our brain. You know, they chose a group of students. They divided them into two groups. One, they created a lot of hope of what they want to achieve in the future and the proper workout plan being done. And another group, they just said, you can achieve by yourself whatever that you want to achieve. And there is no proper plan and there is no hope. And it's left to their decision. When they scanned both their brains and the, in their scanning, that they are found people. Please, can you Yes, thank you. So, friends, the moment they created hope, these children in their academic performance as well as social relationship in everything, 
they performed 80% better than the children who weren't given hope or would not have the focus of hope. And the work of orbitofrontal cortex is involved in reward process. And that's where, you know, as teachers, as children, I mean, as, as teachers to children, as counselors and psychotherapists, we need to initiate rewards in the client's brain. And that works better. And that is the part of a production of motivation, a goal-oriented behavior. And that's the finding of a neuropsychoimmunologist. This orbitofrontal cortex is just closer to your eye and the frontal cortex of your brain. The green part that you find in this picture, that is orbitofrontal cortex. People who have hope, this orbitofrontal cortex is powerful. And that's why, my dear friends, if you're a businessman, if you're a teacher, if you are a counselor and psychotherapist, you can embark or you can sort of uh, instill that hope into your customers, into your clients, into your students, because straight away through your eyes, this orbitofrontal cortex closer to your eyes, you know that pupil dilation happens. That pupil dilation that happens automatically attracts people closer to you. Your hope gets multiplied and your hope goes on achieving great things. Friends, lot and lot more research is done. Academic performance, athletic performance, a greater physical well-being, interpersonal relationship, hope can achieve. A dream of hope can achieve. People who have a greater stress, I remember I had a client, you know, he had a lot of struggles on addictions, pornography addiction, and the relationships as a sort of a womanizer. And he had a lot of struggles along with him. And there was so much of stress, he said, it is better for me to die. And there is no hope that I can overcome all of this mess that I created around me. I traveled with him. I just listened to all of his painful stories. And the moment he get, got along with me in the therapeutic techniques, the moment I focused my therapeutic technique on hope orientation, made him to work out certain worksheets that are very important to create hope, and certain questionnaires, I've sent you also the questionnaire, which you'll be getting to work on and to find out your hope level. So all of this strategically helped me to work on his hope. After that, he picked up, you know, he picked up his own business and it worked so well. Before he would tell me every time his business is a failure, failure, he can't do anything about it. He came up with a lot of new plans so far, you know, getting into his business in a beautiful way. I was astonished. Hope can make miracles happen. Even a stressful situation, a person who has hope doesn't find it a very threatening. They can face it, come what may. Friends, those of you who are suffering with anxiety issues, a lot of depressions, all those people, for you the better medication is hope. Create hope. Right now, as you hear this, you, you must be wondering, how do I do this? We are going to get on to those ladders so soon. So wait until you get to there. Hope makes your all your short-term and long-term goals very, very successful. And those of you who are college students, if only you create a hope. And that's how you see, I just not thinking these all the different, different more than 10, 20 research articles and four basic books that I read through. I picked up all the citations here. And to say these all are so many years of research outcome, my dear friends. So these research outcomes gives us the hope that having hope can transform your life. And uh, even in your academic performance, it increases the way that you create hope and visualize it. 
hope is very much necessary, whether you're married in your marital relationship or religious and religious relationship, or as a teacher in your teacher profession or a psychotherapist, you before embarking or imparting this hope need life satisfaction. For that, you should create a hope of being a great teacher, a great therapist, reaching out, picking it up. Those of you who are into spirituality and religiosity, you have a sort of a beautiful gift through your religion and spirituality. And the research says, People who are highly spiritual have high potency of hope and transformation in their life. So in your journey and in your every walk of life, have this spirituality along with your hope because the research has found all those followers, whatever the type of followers, they may be your students or your clients, your you know, co-workers, anybody who is following you, needs these four things. Remember, if only you can possess these four things in you, inculcate these beautiful four qualities, trust, compassion, stability, and hope. You are the great leader. You are an exponential leader on this earth. Check in friends, evaluate yourself, give a mark of, on the scale of zero to 10. How much trust do I have within me? And how much stress, I mean, trust do I have around people around me? Am I compassionate towards me? Do I show compassion to my students? Or am I very arrogant? Stability. Do I, as soon as go into my classroom and I say, maybe I may be teaching for one month or one day, I don't know. But if you are not behaving well, I will change my class, okay? I will no more be your class teacher. Instability does not allow your followers to ho have hope. Stability is needed. Stability creates a security. Get in, you know, imagine the day you got married, those of you married, on your marriage day, your husband says, I don't know, or your spouse says, yeah, wife says, I don't know how long I will remain with you, but somehow I am into this marriage. Are you ready to follow this? <laughs> So it's quite dangerous. Friends, for any followers, you need a trust, compassion, stability, hope. If you're a CEO in your company, do your followers get all of this? Make a research, get a feedback. You will understand whether you are a good leader or a good teacher or a good counselor or a psychotherapist. Hope-filled teachers, therapists, and leaders will shine well. Shine, it doesn't mean that you shine well. You will shine every person who comes in contact with you. Because the light that you possess within you with hope, it's radiating. It's like a lamp that's on the lampstand. Friends, this hope intervention is precious for people who go through the skidding effect. The skidding effect is all those people who come and say to you in counseling or students who come to share with you, I don't know, nothing happening to me. I'm not able to create any change in my life. Those are the ones suffering with the skidding effect. They need hope. The moment you hear all of those words, your mind or your light in your brain should burn. Come on, friend. This is a beautiful opportunity to impart hope. Either you are in a counseling or psychotherapeutic intervention. Find out whether your client has the bruising effect. Bruising effect are those who just encounter a failure. Maybe a failure, love failure. I had a client, father. It's been three love failures. He had a bruising effect. I think never in my life I will get married. Please help me. So he had a bruising effect. Friends, the boomerang effect. There are some people who have a boomerang effect. They have tried many things, yet they feel they are in zero. 
I mean, back one. So the boomerang effect, people with a boomerang effect are those people who tried it out. You know, I, you know, I had a client who tried for a sub to be a policeman. He tried four interviews, five interviews, and then, you know, it comes back again, a failure. And he needs the alien effect. Client feels nobody understands me. What am I, I am going through? Nobody around understands me. And the, one of my clients who was in a drug addict, he asked me, have you ever tried any drugs? I said, I'm sorry, so far, no. Then how will you understand me? So for him, I'm an alien, an alien effect. Yeah? All these people need hope. Are you ready to find out which type of students or clients are you with? Students with skidding effect, bruising effect, boomerang effect, or the alien effect? Check it out. All of these, they need hope. And hope is the best medicine. Let's now move on to the ways to create hope as therapeutic target. And I appreciate you of all of you who are participating. And those of you in between who want to jump on your mic and make it one, please can you switch it off for the sake of other so that it may not be a disturbance. I know you want to say and then yeah, try your best to switch off your mic. I'm very hopeful that they will do it. Shanti, can you mute yourself? Shanti, please, can you mute your mic, please? Yes, thank you. All right. There are ways to create hope as a therapeutic target. You see, I had a hope that they would listen to me. Hope came true. So ways to create hope as a therapeutic target. What are all those ways? I know you're all interested. You want to take down what all the ways that I can create hope in my therapy, in my meeting with the students, in with my clients, because it's a lot of research. I can go and go on and on. Friends, those of you psychotherapists, my own students listening, there is a hope therapy. There is a school developing on hope therapy. That may be another topic in some other occasion. We will work on that. Right. I developed a three-step model, friends. It's mine. Okay. You have to footnote it. The three-step model you can follow in your counseling. You can follow in your meeting with the clients. That's our target, a target of creating hope in counseling. Yeah. The first step, I call it release. Friends, I seen my grandfather who was a farmer. He would by himself make uh, the plowshares and then Prepare the ground before you would sow. I asked grandfather one day when I was small, Oh, why do you do this? It's quite burdensome. You just throw seeds and the plants will grow. And they said, when you were born, we, gen we didn't just throw you on the street. We took care of you and we nurtured you and we took you to hospital when you were sick. Same way, the seeds need a beautiful environment. Hope does not come all of a sudden. People, those who have lost hope, I have gone through, I mean, I've seen or I've gone through in my life as well. I've seen people in the war field when I did a trauma counseling for people who were in the war field who got affected in the war field. No ray of hope at all. It's complete darkness. Pain. Pain stagnates them. Pain doesn't make them flexible. Pain all the more makes them to be stagnant. For all those people, we need a release. So friends, remember, you are an enhancer. You are a facilitator for those people to release, to let go. Just like those bubbles, all this pain to let go. I do this exercise. These are all little, little techniques, even amidst children, yeah? I tell them to do this, make this bubbles. Imagine the little, little problems that you have. You blow them out and see how long these bubbles remain. Oh, within no time, they burst and disappear. Such are your problems, dear. Come on, give a high five. Let's do it. Have hope. 
simple technique, friends. These are creative ways. It's just coming to my thoughts. So many ideas as I speak to you. You are all very good creators. The moment you have a hope within yourself and you have the hope that you can reach out to others, automatically this can function the most and the powerful wisdom is within you and you are precious. Help the people with those questions. What am I feeling right now? What is it very strong in me? How can I release these feelings? You know, all of these discussions is the first and foremost way to let go of all their pain. For this, my dear friends, you need therapeutic dyadic relationship or triad relationship, a therapeutic relationship triad. I know all of my students know it by this time. I, I, I don't know how many are going to type what all those therapeutic relationship triad. Yeah, uh, let me check whether any answers am I getting from my students, those who are listening. Yeah, if they have typed it, it's well and good. These are most important, the triad. And uh, psychotherapy outcome research, beautifully proved. And all those people went through counseling and psychotherapy. And they made a research, what worked wonders in them? Is it the psychotherapy gestalt therapy? Is it that uh, solution-focused brief therapy? Is it that um, person-centered therapy? Is it that uh, feminist therapy? What therapy worked in them? What actually helped them? In all of those researches done for years together among those clients who went through therapy, they found it is empathy, genuineness, and positive regard. People who had empathy towards their students, their clients, when they are genuinely involving with their students and the clients, when they have a positive regard, unconditional positive regard, if you change only, I will love you. I will teach you. If you change only, I'm going to do this. Unconditional positive regard. I understand why you are doing this, my dear friend. Maybe you are so much of pain and struggle in your family. And that's why I understand you. Come on, let's talk together. I am there in your journey. Empathy, genuineness, all of this creates a vision, desire, belief and hope acceptance and into action. Friends, these are very, very important triad. In any relationship, I mean, even in your family, if you can check in yourself, do I exhibit empathy in my relationship? Unconditional positive regard. Most often people get disturbed. Why? Because the past is still there they are not able to release. Why they are not able to release? They did not get all of these three. What is all of these three? I would call it embryo imprints. Uh, you know, uh, what happens? All this empathy, unconditional posture, regard and genuineness is all those qualities that we received in the most safest place in the world that is mother's womb. Mummy covers the baby in our tummy, in our womb, she always empathy, empathetic. Whatever she eats, she will first think, will it affect my child? Anything that is good for my child, I should take in because I'm responsible. I'm very genuine in saying, my dear child, I love you. I'm expecting you into this world. You are growing so well inside of me. That is an unconditional positive regard. No, mommy doesn't say, I need a girl baby. I need a boy baby. I need a very intelligent baby. I need a most handsome and beautiful baby who can win the championship in the Olympic, who can be the Mrs. World or Miss World. No. When all these three things nurtured us in our growth, in our life, into our journey into this world, only these three things can create this change. So friends, it's most important in your dealings, in your therapy, in your teaching, please. The second step I invented is restore. Once you help somebody to release all of those pain and the struggle, 
It is next step is very easy. Restoration. I, I wanted to sound positive and that's how I put this word restore. Restore is to focus on happiness. Make happiness in here and now. How would I call my clients or whomsoever I face? I would just tell them, become aware right now when you close your eyes, what all comes to you? Accept those feelings. Don't struggle or fight with those feelings. Accept those feelings and thoughts. What are the thoughts it might be? It might be even the worst of thoughts that you might get right now. You accept it. Yeah, right now I'm getting this. I, I can't do anything about it. I accept it. The moment you accept, you are moving. There is a flexibility. You are being present in the now. And it helps you to be open. So help them to restore this way the happiness that is deep within. And that's why you can be able to make them relax. Relax is the third step, which is creating hope. Instilling hope. There you saw a future plan. This is what we are going to achieve. A goal that you set along with your students. A goal that you set along with your clients. That can be beautifully worked. Friends, the mutual goals can be beautifully worked. Because by this time on your journey, you have created that embryo trust. You know, that trust already started secreting testosterone. So the moment oxytocin, testosterone, and everything is produced, I'm sorry, oxytocin and serotonin and dopamine are produced through this trust, automatically there is an energy energy to have this hope and your prefrontal cortex begins to do this work and Seligman the father of positive psychology might call this way deal with the past be present with your happiness create hope about your future and these are the three beautiful very very simple steps I call it release, restore, and relax. Simple. Release, restore, and relax. So quote me, friends, you have to open up to the world and learn optimism. Contentment with the past, happiness with the present, and hope of the future is that way that you learn optimism. Research beautifully says, only humans are hopeful. <laughs> only humans are hopeful. Why, you know, my dear friends? Because only we have this prefrontal cortex. And that's why we can impart this beautiful gift of hope to everybody whomsoever we meet. Let our talk be, oh, in this pandemic, everything locked down. Yeah, that's all. Life is gone. Yeah, economy is gone. And uh, I think we cannot. No, please. We are called to create hope and energy. Let our talk be hope. Why? Because hope has ripple effect. Your friend's friend's friend can influence you with the hope. And that's how the social you know, network works. It's a longitudinal study among the patients that's been done for 80 years among the people with, who with the cardiovascular diseases. And after recovery of those cardiovascular diseases, they are friends, friends, friend. If that person has a hope, it influences the first person. And if the first person has a hope, it influences the last person there in the row. One person in the family, redemption for the whole family. One person in the institute with full of hope. It's a redemption because it creates a ripple effect. And it is powerful, dear friends. Hope, you are not just listening. You are taking down. You are not just taking down. You are using your not enough rank to write it in your brain and that it becomes your life. So, 
the ways to create hope hang out with most hopeful people in your life you might have found you know maybe your neighbor who is always energetic and hopeful of his future maybe your dad or your mom you know these youngsters they found somebody on the street and they are having a fun and hopeful such a energy it gets vibrated to the whole group so friends find out those people who are always hopeful and their company will influence you i'll give you some practical tips how to impart this friends there are hope rising worksheets available google them and find out your client or your student that you are going to teach you know first create this hope and automatically intelligence will come otherwise you are you will break your head whole year they are not studying they are not studying the management will scold me no very easy way impart hope how to find just like i have sent you a question up give the question up find out their hope level make them not to feel guilt about if the hope is low i encourage wonderful you have a hope level very low i can help you to come out of it the highest hopes and deepest fears make them to write down what all their hopes and what all fears do they have create a hope map of from their childhood or from now 5 years create a map what all they want to achieve how they will achieve make them have a hope journal at home every day they need to write a word about that hope that they want to achieve something about it write it down it worked with one of my client he is not a so much of a verbos i mean he doesn't speak he is a good writer i gave him this hope journal it tr- made a, a great impact to come out of his uh, you know chain smoking system exploring belief about hope i have done it most of in my group therapies group sessions to the group i give the questionnaires about their hope level and make them to discuss about it construct a hope story create in your story narration as teachers you might be saying some stories you know making little little parables to make things understand just like at the beginning of the talk i gave you a few parables to understand the importance of hope so construct the hope story just like the thirsty crow hope story that the teacher who taught me taught me in a powerful way so friends you are not dealing with the machineries you are all dealing with human beings we need to use utmost care every word that we utter values so many long years my primary school teacher can create a hope story in me that is still alive how much more powerful are your words and that to during this pandemic situation create an internal movie make them to visualize run all of their hopes to run like a movie these are the ways you can help your clients wonderful ways friends very simple and you need not to struggle so much for these steps yeah kindly take down and you have more than me you all have a very very creative powers and those creative power you can remodify these systems you can bring in lot of new techniques in imparting this hope into people right why so much of hope i want to make you completely trust in this because it's a scientific experiment done by kurt richter kurt richter took took 32 domesticated rats and put them in a drum of water and these domesticated rats almost within 2 minutes got down but as soon as they got into the water they were just roaming around the hope of getting some food and they got drowned fast and died and he thought maybe the wild rats might may do much better so he let a group of wild rats caught hold of the wild rats put them in the water these wild rats swam almost the same timing and they got drowned 
Oh, Danny found there is no difference between this domesticated and wild rats. Right, let me train in another way. So he took some wild rats because they are more energetic than this domesticated rats. So he took those wild rats and two of them, he put them in the water. As they were about to drown, Kurt saved them up and gently warmed them up. He gave that human touch and then they were able to have breathe and you know whatever the feed that they need being fed. And Kurt led them again in the water. You know, Kurt found after all of this process, the rats can swim on the water even for a day together. Friends, what changed in this rat's energy is the hope. Hope that someone will save me before I drown. Friends, develop a very, very healthy relationship where you develop that hope. Please, please, I request you and these moments of struggle people are going through, whomsoever you meet, after attending this uh, seminar, a webinar, you, your words are, should be words of spreading this hope because this hope can make your mental energy quadruple. Please take your pen and paper. Write down what are some of your hopes and dreams if you want to participate in a small exercise that I do right now. Write down what are some of your hopes and dreams. We may not have time to write every one of them. Maybe most important hopes and dreams that you have. Hope you are writing it down. Right. Write some of the fears and struggles. When you say about this uh, hopes, maybe you might have certain fears and struggles. Write down what all those fears and struggles that you have in achieving that hope. Friends, if you can really practice with me, this will be helpful when you go and, you know, sort of uh, help clients or help your students in the classroom. That would be wonderful and very, very helpful way. I hope you have written some of those fears and struggles. Friends, um, if possible, if there are people nearby, if it is shareable, yeah, you know what to share and what not to share. It would be nice if you can share with them this is what your hopes are. If, you, if they are very friendly with you and if you trust them, it's okay to share. Huh? Otherwise, take time and talk to your counselors or somebody trustworthy, or even you can take a WhatsApp and they you know sort of a voice message to your loved ones. Hey, this is my hope. This all I find it as a fear and struggle. you are make a positive statement like some of them i have written i'm an achiever i'm a champion i'm successful i'm talented i'm intelligent i'm an excellent teacher i'm a psychotherapist i'm a counselor i'm a psychologist i'm a good homemaker so make a positive mission statement of your hope whatever the hope it can be yeah don't write all of these, what I have put you, these are just for an instance, for example, yeah?
Hope you made a positive mission statement. So friends, may I request you, if you have done that, may I request you to close your eyes and sit straight. Inga. Just relax yourself. Focus on your dreams and hopes. And the ways to achieve it. Just visualize only those methods. Maybe in between any thoughts and feelings coming, don't fight with that. Just attend to it and say, I accept it. Yeah, right now I'm getting this thought. Right now my feeling is this. As you concentrate on your breathing, Become aware of your thoughts and emotions. Your hopes and dreams and the ways to achieve it, run it like a movie as if you are doing it. You started doing it. You started meeting people whomsoever that needs to be. You started taking steps whatsoever to be done. And let the mission statement appear in front of you on a board or somebody narrating in a sound in a loud voice as if you hear or you see it beautifully decorated the mission statement, whatever that you made as a mission statement. I'm an achiever. I'm the best teacher. I'm a champion. Make that as a joy and feel as if you have achieved it. Create that as a joy. Make a smile on your face. Ask yourself. Make it as if it is still happening and people are appreciating you that you have achieved it. Relax yourself. Go deeper and deeper to yourself. Spread this joy of achieving into all of your body and to your being. You have achieved it and spread the happiness of achievement all through your body. Just relax. Make the mission statement as colorful as you can and relax. Relax your whole body. Breathe in and breathe out. And take your time and slowly and gently open your eyes. Thank you, dear friends, for following through this exercise. It doesn't even take five minutes, a you know, few minutes. If you can keep on doing that for a few times, automatically the hope comes into you. And your focus, not on the past, your focus is on the future with the hope that always motivates you to go again. Teach your students, teach your clients, teach all those people who come in contact with you with a lot of struggles. Teach them the power of visualization because, my dear friends, hope means hold on, pain ends. I make it. Hope means hold on, pandemic ends. The moment you created hope, 
pandemic ended in your life because you know how to do your life and go again in your life. You can impart the same energy to everyone, whomsoever you meet. And thank you very much for your patient listening, my dear friends. These are the books I recommend in creating hope. If you can read these four books, the most important and beautiful, and it is very, very helpful. Yeah, making hope happen, the psychology of hope, how we hope, the hope circuit. And those of you who want to do research on hope, I have a few more references as well. So you can take a snapshot of these references if you like. My dear friends, I met in a war field a mother who was completely broken and grew into depression. She didn't talk with anybody. Please, dear friends, can, for the sake of others, can you mute your mic? Yes, thank you. So, oh, it's not done yet. Thank you. So, Chitra from Chennai. Can you please mute your mic? Yeah. So, friends, on this war field, she didn't know her only son is alive or not. She's completely depressed around whatever things that happened, the abuses that happened around her. I spoke to her. I accompanied her in a release of all those emotions. I made her to restore certain works to accept what she is doing and, you know, made her to get into daily activities and encouraged her. And I created a hope. One day, if your son comes home, how will he find you? Will he not find you being happy? Or will he not find you being sad and be happy? Which one will make him happy? She said, surely by being happy. So what she did from the next day onwards, she cleaned herself, cleaned the whole environment, kept his son's picture along with the God's picture that she had. And every day in her prayer, she would say, when my son comes, I would do this, do this, do this. Our hope of getting her son back made her energetic and enthusiastic. I don't know whether I have done good thing or wrong thing. It's not for you to judge or it is not for good for me to judge. But it worked for her. For her whole life to go on, full of energy and enthusiasm. Friends, create the hope. And we have a lot of uh, similar type of uh, uh, learnings on site and you can get connected with us and Anugraha if some of you are interested in more of these topics and we have e-learning websites as well. So thank you very much for this wonderful uh, opportunity that's given by the Charles Education College and uh, all the dignitaries who gave me this opportunity and over to people, those who have questions to ask.